Hello and welcome or welcome back to my Dandelion Diaries. I am going to be doing part two of my pre-planned setups for the remaining planners that I have intentions for for 2025. I do apologize for the glare. I have lights on today as um, my lighting isn't the best. So hopefully it's not going to be too awful. We're not going to be spending too much time on the outside where the clear covers are anyways. I also want to apologize for my hands. They look like they are dirty, but I promise you they are just stained. I was doing some stuff in the garden and I cannot for the life of me get the brown tint off of them. Um, I have scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed and I just am embracing it now. It is part of my hands. Like my previous video that I did the pre-plans of setups with the rest of my Hobonichi planners, I'm going to be doing the same method today. I have the planner itself, a little pad of sticky notes, and then a pen, and I'm going to be going page by page, kind of deciding what I want to do for each section of these planners in more of a, I guess, like a, a thought process. So this is going to be a bit of a chatty video. If you're interested in any one specific planner, I will have timestamps in the description where I go through each one um, and then go from there. The books in this video are going to be from Wonderland 222. This is the A5 All-in-One Unstacked in the Hazelnut cover. Um, and then I also have my take a note here, which is the A5 take a note. And then the Magic of Eye Astrology Planner, again, in the larger size, the classic A5 size. And this one is in Deep Moss. Um, and I'm actually going to start with this one here. So starting off for the A5 um, Magic of Eye book here in the Deep Moss, this is housed right now in a Hobonichi Hone clear cover. Um, I have found that the foiling on the covers of these planners doesn't always stay the whole year, especially with lots of handling. I've lost a lot of spine text on a few of my other books. So I just do this as a precaution to kind of keep the book as pristine as I can. The actual cover feel of the planner though is fabulous um, and I don't really want to use a clear cover on it. I just want to keep the artwork on it as long as I can. So hence the clear cover. But anyways, for how I plan to use this book, I want to use it as a place for gratitude and more of like manifestations, um, scripting, anything like that. Um, there is a lot of beautiful, beautiful reference information in the beginning of this book. Um, I'm not going to go through this too much because it is pretty much the same year to year. And I don't really do anything with these front pages other than use them for reference information. I will say the only new thing about the 2025 books is they do have a section for astro mycology. Um, I think it's mycology. No, astro mythology. And they have a new type of print um, where it is on black pages with a kind of like light tan print, almost like a dark mode and book form. I think it's beautiful. Um, I'm not going to, again, go through this, but I'll flip if you want to you know, take screenshot and zoom in and try to read it. But it is really interesting information. But I don't really have any intentions of what I want to do with the beginning pages other than use them as reference material, which is what I normally do when I use this planner. But the first actual section that you do anything here is the goals. I'm pretty sure it's the goals. Actually, hold on. I think it might be a tracker. I skipped it. Yep. It's the tracker page. So this is what they consider the moon phase tracker or menstrual phase, menstrual cycle and moon phase tracker together. And actually that is what I intend to use this for is just, um, kind of tracking my menstrual cycle with the moon. I don't really have a lot of, I guess, discipline with filling this one out. So if I skip a few, like if I don't end up filling it out with anything, I'm not going to be mad at myself. It's just, I want to have the idea there of seeing where my menstrual cycle falls along the moon phases. I think it's kind of a cool concept, especially given the information in the book. But the actual next section is all about goals or um, intention setting. And so I do plan on actually using this for what it's meant for. And that is the breakdown of your intentions or goals for the year. I do think that the A5 size is a really great way to use this because it's got plenty of space. Um, I also like to write this down in a separate notebook too, just that I can have a reference. But I will just put down goals and intentions because that is what I am going to use it for. And just so you can kind of see how I did it with my current one, this is the Pocket Magic of Eye book. Um, I ended up using 
this section as like again goals and intentions and I filled out one side of the page and then I went back I'm going to go back at the end of the year for the other side of the page but this is essentially what I'm going to do for 2025 it's just going to be the 2025 version versus the 2024 version so I will have you know paragraphs written of like what I want to do for for the these goals then the next section here after you go through all of the eight different sections of life there is a space for the bird's eye view of 2025 this is like a tracker page so i really don't know what to use this for um, i'm really tempted to honestly just leave it blank and not use it at all but part of me thinks i should use this as some kind of budgeting system because i don't really have a tracker like this that I use in my books that I use for spending or budgeting. I have a separate little notebook that I just naturally track things in. Um, and I also have a spreadsheet on my computer. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I want to use this for budgeting or leave it blank, or if maybe I'll come up with something else by the time I set up the book, but I'm thinking budgeting for now. Um, maybe I can track some kind of investments with it. I, I yeah, I really don't, 100% know what I want to do with this yet, but I think budgeting is what I'm strongly leading towards. Okay, then we move on into the actual calendar pages here. So here we have the monthly pages. Um, I'm actually not going to add anything here, but I am going to highlight the different aspects that I want to pay attention to because I do use this for the astrology information. And that way, when I go to pull from this book to another book, which is also in this video, the take a note, um, I can have it all easily visualized versus having to do both steps at once. So when I set this up, I will go through and highlight all of the major aspects that I want to pay attention to for the whole year, which again, is kind of why I get this planner is because it has it all laid out for me really easily versus having to go to multiple sources. I really like that I can just have it all in my hands at once. The next section of the monthly is the monthly goals section. Um, I want to use this a little bit differently than how I did in this year, 2024. So my 2024 take a note or take a note, magic of an eye, this little baby I used for gratitude. So similar kind of idea that I want to do for the 2025 one, but I also want to use it again more for like manifestation scripting kind of situations. So for the monthly goals, I want to have a space for my monthly manifestations and then also a space for things that I want to release. And that's going to be kind of a big theme for me with this year's planner is I want to have a space that I can write down, I am releasing blah, blah, blah this week, or I am releasing blah, blah, blah today. Because I think physically writing down those words is going to help me overcome some of the challenges and obstacles that I've been facing mentally, um, maybe even physically, maybe even emotionally. I don't really know how it's going to affect me yet, but I know having the gratitude space for the past year has been phenomenal and I want to continue that and then kind of add on to it as well. For the other side here, the weekly pages, um, this is where I want to do a very similar concept. So instead of monthly manifestations releases, it's going to be more of like a weekly manifestation. So it could be like a broad term for the month of January, you know, meet an, an exercise goal, like think of like New Year's resolution, like New Year, New Me. That could be the very generic <laughs> manifestation. And then weekly, I want to break it down. It's like, okay, for week one, I'm going to focus on this. Week two, I'm going to focus on this. Week three, I'm going to focus on this. And just kind of like break it down a little bit more. You could honestly use the word goal breakdown too, instead of manifestation breakdown if you want. They are kind of similar to me personally, just because a goal is something I'm trying to reach forward and manifestation is something that I'm doing to reach that goal. So it's like a play on words. You don't really have to call it whatever I'm calling it. You can call it whatever you want to call it. If you want to do something similar to this, I'm just giving you an example of how I'm going to be using this planner. I also may even use this side as a overview of like what I was most grateful for for the week, which is how I used my 2024 book. I think that was still a really good practice, but I didn't really keep up with it, which is why I want to see if I can change it into something else and still utilize these pages really well. The next sections in this book is the weeklies. So um, every month you have your monthly page, your goal pages, and then your weekly pages start. And here I want to start, um, again, that scripting that I was talking about. So I'm going to be asking myself, you know, what do you manifest? What are you grateful for? And what do you release? 
and my handwriting is terrible on the sticky note. I apologize. But basically by asking those three questions, I can answer it with like, I manifest blah, blah, blah. I am grateful for blah, blah, blah. I release blah, blah, blah. And, and the size of the bigger book has enough space for that, um, which is better than what I'm currently using. So this is the little book that I have here. So here I tried doing the, the scripting that I'm trying to planning to do, I guess in 2025. And it's just a really tiny space. So I'm hoping with the bigger book, I'm going to have a lot more space to write down and just be a little bit more, I, I guess, <laughs> use more, use more words. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with my vocabulary today, but I definitely want to have a little bit more space to write down, which is why I ended up going with the bigger book versus the smaller book, even though I do enjoy the size of the smaller book. Okay. So that's pretty much the basics of this journal. Um, there's not really a whole lot of other different spreads in here. The only other differences are at the end of every month, you get that full moon spread and a new moon spread. And I do want to kind of copy forward some of my moon notes. So I'm just going to put moon notes on the sticky note for myself, but I'll verbally explain it to you guys. I like to use um, the tarot or oracle deck, the moonology that was recommended to me by actually some of you viewers and I absolutely, absolutely love it. So I want to kind of copy forward some of the notes from that deck. And then I also want to re reference information from one of my favorite moon books, which is called Lunar Living. So I will pull information from both of those sources and make this more of like a note taking page versus having the, I guess the scripting of like, you know, intentions for the new moon and, you know, illuminations for the full moon. Cause I plan on doing that stuff, that type of stuff in, um, a separate journal. Again, I'll show you guys here in a second, but this is what I'm hoping to do for the majority of the magic of eye book. So not really a whole lot else to set up with this one because the spreads just repeat every single month. There are notes pages in the back of this book, and I'm going to be honest, I had intentions to do journal prompts in my 2024 book and never went back and did it. So I think I'm just going to leave the notes pages blank in the back of this book because I don't really see a, a need for them totally. So I'm just going to leave them as they are. If I come up with an idea of what I want to use them for later, I will, but I think I just want this to be pretty easy. Plain Jane, come in, write down, you know, three things for the day and then move on because I find that when I have a lot of different hobby journals like this or extra journals, I need them to be simple and quick and not take up a bunch of time. Otherwise I find they become a bit of a burden and I don't really want to use them anymore. So yeah, but I do enjoy having all of the different books. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on into the next book, which is also going to be a bit more of like a hobby slash astrology journal. Um, and this is the Take a Note A5 book here in the English version. And I am actually very excited to use this again for 2025. So I have a 2024 book here, which is what I used for my 2024 astrology practice. I didn't get this book until mid year, um, but I do want to share kind of like how I am going to use it. So I'll share my monthly. I'll share a completed monthly. So here is my August monthly. Um, I'm planning to do the exact same thing with the 2025 version here. And I'll go over this again in a second. And then for the weeklies, this is kind of how I've been using them too. And I'm basically going to just copy over the exact same information that I'm doing here, but it's going to be a 2025 version. So it's going to be updated with the 2025 aspects. So when it comes to the actual setup of this planner, it's going to probably be a pretty long one because I'm going to go almost through the whole year. Cause I already have all the information I need. And that way it's a lot faster to, um, kind of use throughout the year. Okay. For the year at a glance pages here, I plan on doing this again with the full moon, new moon situation. So I'm going to take a dot marker and just mark out full moons and new moons. And that way I know which dates they are for the whole year. I don't really have any other intentions for this. Um, it's just a nice reference page. And then for the horizontal Gantt chart over here or the other tracker page, I'm going to do this again for planet movements. For 2024, I did it with just Mercury. But for 2025, I think I want to try to include maybe um, one other planet, if not two or three it just depends on how I can get it to look with the space that's here since it is a very limited amount of space. But I do want to try to do more than just one planet um, for 2024 or 2025. 
Then for the other uh, Gantt chart, vertical tracker, Calendex, whatever type of page you want to call this, I want to do this the same as I did in 2024 and write down the transits and aspects for the whole year. This is a pretty extensive list of things to do, but let me show you how my 2024 one turned out because I really, this is such quick reference information for me. And since I'm the one who kind of based it out how I understand it, it makes it very easy for me to comprehend. So I have a key for each type of planet um, or each planet. And then I have the different kind of aspects going throughout the whole year. So when I set this up, I'll do the whole year in the beginning. And that way I have this all as reference information for myself for the year. Again, I guess I'm using this in, instead of like a hobby journal, this is more of like a study practice because I find this information absolutely fascinating. So I definitely want to keep up with it and kind of continue the use of this planner because I've really enjoyed it a lot in 2024. Okay, so for the monthly section, this is going to be exactly the same as I did in 2024. So I'm gonna have a section for my monthly intentions and a space for my review. So I'm probably gonna put that up here. I'll do monthly intentions here, monthly review here. And then I think um, I wanna continue with a monthly tarot practice. And I've been putting that over here on the right side. So I do want to put that again for 2025. I just pull three cards and write down um, like my interpretation. And then I want to do all of the holidays and aspects again here um, in the actual monthly section. And I honestly think this is going to be the space that I may move some things around. So instead of doing all the aspects here, since I'm already going to have them referenced in these pages here, I may just skip it. Um, it'll depend on how I feel, but I do definitely want to have the holidays a bit more um, on the monthlies here. So that way I can correlate astrology with American holidays and see like where things are landing. Again, this is all just like really interesting information for me. And then I want to continue more notes like I did in 2024 here on the left side. So I'm just going to put astro notes and I'll show you guys again that monthly spread so I can kind of explain it better with what it actually looks like when I'd be done. Because again, I'm just going to be doing pretty much the exact same thing that I, I did this year. So here's July. So here's what I mean. So this will be a section for my monthly intentions. Here's my monthly review section. Here is where I would put my tarot information. In the monthly squares here, I have um, all of the aspects and moon information, and I have a holiday written down, but I wanna put, make sure I'm putting in all of the different holidays, not just the main ones. Um, and then on the other side here, I have that section that I was talking about in astro astrology notes. So for 2024, I ended up going with numerology. So all of the sevens with like, which sign was number seven, which house number seven, which planet was number seven and making notes underneath those. I may change it for 2025, pick a new topic. I'm not sure yet. I just definitely want to keep this up with notes because I find it, again, very, very fascinating. Then after all of the monthlies in here, since they are grouped together, we start with the weeklies and dailies. And I do want to, again, kind of keep up with the way I've been using it, but I'm going to make a couple of changes. So instead of doing the um, kind of like daily events here, I want to go back to doing more tarot because I was really having intentions a lot in 2024 to pull more tarot cards, learn more about the tarot practice um, and just better familiarize myself with the cards. So I think instead of doing the daily practices, which, which is what I was trying to do at the beginning of 2024, going into 2025, I'm going to go with monthly and weekly practices and see if that helps me a little bit better. Like it's less time consuming. So I'm going to say weekly tarot pulls or I'll go back to doing the um, daily synopsis because that was kind of cool to see like how the astrology was for the day and then reference what actually happened to me and see how they kind of correlated. And then on the other pages here, the actual daily columns is where I'm going to be doing all of the notes on the aspects and moons for that day. And again, I will show you exactly what I've done currently in 2024 because it's going to be a very similar appearance. Um, for, you know, 2025. So here I have those things that I was saying, I was doing a synopsis of what was happening to me. So instead of doing that, I probably will pull tarot cards for the week and see what we get there. But on the daily pages, I've been using stickers from my shop. I have my moon phases here and then my symbols, um, either planet or zodiac 
there's symbol buttons, they're tiny little stickers, and they fit within like the little grids. So I've been using those to kind of embolden what aspect is happening. And then underneath that, I've been writing a description or a translation of what the aspects mean to me personally, or what notes I have found about that aspect. Um, I do like to decorate a lot with stickers, which is why there's so many stickers here, but I honestly may keep it a bit more plain in 2025 haven't really decided but um for the spaces that are more like bigger bigger things happening astrology wise so like the new moons I leave more space to make sure I can have more room to write and then for like the sabbats I try to leave space under that as well so I can write down a bit more about the sabbat and learn more about like the traditions of it maybe things to do on that day um or anything like that I really love this planner and I'm really excited to do this again for 2025 again not really a lot new going on here. It's just a fun space for me to practice um, something that I find very, very interesting. Then after all of the weeklies and daily section here, there is notes pages in the back. And while I don't really know exactly what I want to do with them, because I had intentions last year to copy over my reference material in here, but I never did it. I think I'm going to be using these as more of like um, monthly color swatches maybe or like washi swatches of like what materials I want to use. And that way, because um, when I set this up at the beginning of the year, I'm pretty much going to be using the same materials for the whole book. Um, and that way I can have a reference spot to go back if I need to touch anything up or add anything and I'm not having to, you know, use a different pen and it's not going to look as cohesive. But yeah, that's pretty much all I want to set this book up as. Um, this was my pen test page from when I did the review of this planner, but I really just want to keep this very simple, strictly astrology, like note taking information, um, just, you know, to further my practice and kind of learn more as I go, which is, you know, everything is constantly a learning, you know, teaching moment. And this is what that is for me. So that's pretty much it for the take a note a5 here um i know this probably is very niche but i do enjoy this planner and i want to share it with you guys because i think it's something unique that is you know something somebody else could try out with something they like to do with a different hobby or a different type of information they're trying to keep track of okay the last planner i kind of want to plan out how i want to set up is my wonderland 222 a5 all in one unstacked um i do not have the clear cover for this just yet when i did the unboxing i explained um how they didn't have all of the covers correct so they were sending those separately but when i do get that clear cover i will let you guys know how that fits on this planner most likely it's going to be before i have to set it up but i just want to put that out there but my main intentions with this book is to use it truly, truly as the all-in-one that it states to be. I want to see if I can fit my health journal in here, my garden journal in here, my main cousin book. Like, I want to try to fit all of the things into this book, minus the astrology stuff. That's totally separate and kind of like a niche thing. But I want to see, like, all of my life plans, all of the things I try to keep track of. I want to try to put it all in this book and see if it can handle it. This is the first year that I have intentions for a Wonderland 222 book, so I'm kind of excited to give this a try. Um, oh, I was looking to see which tabs I wanted to use when I was kind of thinking about this, and I think I am going to go with these. These are the Warm Honey tabs from my shop. Anyways, okay, so for the opening pages here, I don't really have any intentions for the beginning parts other than to do kind of just decoration but the inner or the first page here is like a key page and an index page and I do plan on using this as an index for pretty much the whole book I'm thinking so and if not I'll probably do I don't know some dashboards or something kind of fun but I am going to go ahead and stick a sticky note down as making this an index page and then I also want to use the other pages here in the front for um, an adulting log and then possibly goals. So I think I'll do my adulting log here. And then I will do the other pages after this as my goal breakdown pages. And the book is not laying super flat in the front because it is very large on the other side. I'm not really worried about that. As the book gets used over time, it will relax enough. And I'm also going to be flipping this in on itself so often that it's not really going to be a problem for me. Um, 
in terms of the binding issues I'm seeing right now. Well, it's not really an issue. It's just, it's not laying flat. Anyways, okay. Then we have the year at a glance pages. And for this, I think I want to do a vision board. And then for the actual year that I'm going to be referencing 2025, I want to do, I think a combination of what I have in my health planner and then also what I'm going to be putting in my Hobonichi cousin. So I know for one side, I want to do a vision board and that'll probably be the side over here that has 2026 and 2027 because I'm not really going to reference that information. But the actual planner over here, I think I'm going to do the pain management and also period or menstruation tracking. Because I think I can fit all of that in this space. And then for the extra month up here, the 2024 month, maybe I'll copy over the same information from 2024 and it'll just be like two years together. Or maybe I'll cover this up with something else. But I'm not really that worried about that right now. I'll, I'll keep thinking on if there's anything else I want to do on that page. But for sure, I think I want to do the pain management and period tracking here. Then there is the, I guess, vertical tracker page, Calendex page. I don't really know what to call this. Um, it is pretty narrow. So I'm tempted to do what I normally do in my garden journal here, which is temperature tracking and precipitation. Um, other options would be doing something like workouts like workout tracking, but I think I want to save that maybe for somewhere else. So uh, yeah, I'll think, I'll think more on this, but I think temperature tracking and then precipitation, basically pulling from my garden journal here. I'm pretty sure I misspelled precipitation, but it's fine. Um, and then I think at the bottom section here, maybe I can do a key or maybe I could do monthly stats if I have enough space. We'll see by the time I get to setting this up um, what I end up going with. But this space down here would be really skinny for one month and the grids don't match up with the columns. So I may just end up using this as like a grid, like a key space. I don't know yet, but I think precipitation and temperature tr tracking is what I want to do here. Okay, this is the spread that I really don't know what I want to do yet. So I think this is called like the quarterly spread because you have quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. So you have your monthlies on the left side here and then you have a big open blank page on the other side that has um, slightly darker lines if you wanted to do like a three sections, like month one, month two, and three kind of thing. But I think here I would want to do either like writing down what I'm watching so like shows or any kind of movies or I may want to do like what I'm working out like my workouts or I could do this as like my garden monthly pages I really I have so many choices here um so I'll put down all three and then maybe by the time I actually set it up I will make a choice but I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Because if I do the media logging, I think it would be really cool to see, like, I start a show here and I finish it here. Or I watched a movie this Friday, this Saturday, this Sunday kind of thing. And then have fun little notes about each show. Or if I did it with a workout, I could see, like, okay, I'm really consistent with going on Tuesdays, but really not consistent with going on Thursdays. Um, and then have, like, my weightlifting notes over here on the side. And then if I use this for my garden, I could easily see, okay, I planted zucchinis and tomatoes on this day and then they finally sprouted a month later, which is not good. Like they need to be sprouting faster than that. Then I can make notes that way in the garden too. So there's so many things I could use here. And I don't think I could do all three without these pages looking really cramped. So I definitely only want to pick one option, but this gives me, you know, at least some choices to pick from of what I want to do here. Okay, anyways, the next section is, okay, the tracker pages. So I have one random notes page here on this side, and then it starts in December of 2024 as my first tracker page. 
So I think for the notes page over here, I want to do body measurements, which again is something I'm going to be doing for my health planner. So I'm trying to pull again, as much information from those separate journals into one book to see what all I can fit in here. And I think this would be a good spot for that considering this is likely where I'm gonna be putting sleep, mood and stress tracker since it's already laid out for me. But since I have December of 2024 here and I'm not gonna be using this planner in December, I'm gonna wait till January to use it. I think I'm going to split this tracker into a 52-week cleaning tracker because that is something that I really want to do for 2025 is be more on top of my cleaning. So I'm going to see if I can reformat the page a little bit to be a 52-week um, cleaning tracker. And I can just cover up or white out sections of this that say December. And since it's already numbered through 31 up here, I can just, you know, create next section down, you know, 32 through 52 or something. I think I can make it work. We'll see when we get to set up how it turns out. But I think I can make that work really well. But the rest of the tracker pages I do want to use as trackers and also sleep, mood, and stress. So I'm going to say have a tracker and sleep, mood, stress. So when I do this, I will set it up likely exactly how I use it in my current health planner. So on the tracker side, I have different food groups and things that I keep track of on a monthly basis. And then at the bottom, I have a graph from 10 to one, 10 being the best or the most sleep, and then one being the least or least sleep. Um, one hour sleep to 10, 10 hours sleep is kind of how I rate it. And then I do a little graph of like how everything correlates. So I think I could easily do that here. And that the fact, and the fact that these pages are already set up, it should be much quicker because in my health journal, I have to set it up all by hand in a bullet journal type of way. Okay. After the tracker pages, we have another notes page here. And I don't really know what I want to do <laughs> with this notes page. Um... I could just make it as like, I don't know, a letter to myself or something, or I could do routines, maybe like morning or evening routines. I could even make this a workout space, like with my workout plans. I, I don't know about this one yet. <laughs> um, this one's kind of an extra page that is kind of going to throw me off maybe, or I may just leave it blank. I don't know. Maybe just decorate it. There's the options are so endless here. Um, okay. And then for the Wonderland 222, you get the whole month of December of the previous year in terms of monthly overview pages, review pages, and weekly pages. So I don't think I'm going to be using this as what they are. Like I'm not going to be using them as a monthly, weekly section of pages. And at, right now, I don't really have any thoughts of how I want to use them. Um, I'm thinking I could e like write over them as like notes pages for something. Maybe I could make this section for like my dandelion diaries planning, just notes pages. Yeah, I, I don't know, but it is, let's see, if I were to use the overview page, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so like 13, possibly 14 pages, or I could even say 12 pages if I wanted to use this other overview page for something else. But I don't, I don't know here. I, I, yeah, I don't know what I want to use these for. Come, we'll come back to it. Um, probably when I set it up, I'll, I'll think about it some more and, and decide if there's anything I want to do there. For the review pages, uh, the December review page though, I think I want to be this the official start of how I'm going to use this this book in. 2025 so like January 2025 is on this side and then this would be like the beginning ish is I don't know if I'm making sense but I think I want to make this a letter to myself for the year and I think one page should be enough maybe if I think I'll need more than one page I can start that on the other pages and just kind of write through those and have plenty of room to say whatever I want to say okay for the overview page though I do want to make this more about like my monthly intentions a list of my currently inked pens. 
Um, I'll probably have a section for like top memories for the month, maybe include a photo. And then I'm also thinking of putting in a monthly task list or a master list of the things I want to get done for that month. The really cool thing about this planner is I feel like I have so much room, I can add in all of the things. So even though this seems like a lot to fit on one page, if I run out of room, I can go back to the review pages and probably add into it there. Even though I kind of have things I wanna put on the review pages in too. We'll see. For the monthly page here though, um, I do want to do this kind of as a combination of all of the books. So holidays and birthdays, tracking my fasts and stuff, my longer fasts, like my 24 hour fasts, and then also my period tracking. So like um, I write down like the different days I'm on. And then I also think I want to put in my monthly garden tasks, like flea, tre flea treating my dogs and cats, changing out the chicken bedding, um, planting, harvesting, things like that. And this one I'm going to put a star next to because if I do end up using that front section for the monthly garden tasks, I won't put it in this monthly too. The last thing I think I would want to do here is like a daily synopsis um, or a daily, like a brief daily sentence of like what was going on. But I don't know if I'm going to have enough room for that depending on what all I decide to put in here. But I just want to set it down as a possibility. Um because I, again, I don't know how much room I'm gonna have, but at least the idea is there. Then for the weekly pages, um, I kind of want to use this how I'm gonna be using them in my Hobonichi Cousin, because it's basically the exact same layout. But I'm also tempted to do this in more of a dashboard style layout instead of doing just time tracking since it has a bit more of um, a break in the section. So you have a, a bigger top section and a bigger bottom section. So I may do like a meal logging and a cleaning list or something. But um, I just kind of want to put like weekly tasks, time blocking, meal tracking for now. And then if I have other things I want to add in, I'll add them in. But I think there's so many possibilities with the weekly that um, I could fit a lot of things here that I wanted to just in a dashboard or even if I wanted to do more of the hourly timekeeping kind of situation. Okay, and then after the month, there is the review page. And so for the review page, here is where I think I'm going to want to put like my monthly statistics. So like how many pages I read, how many miles I ran, um, how many times I ate out at restaurants, um, well, all those kinds of things. And then I also think I want to do my monthly review here. So like have intentions on the overview page and then the reviews on the review page. And then I also want to maybe put in my monthly garden plant list. Um, and if, again, I'm gonna put an asterisk here, because if I don't use that front section for like my garden monthly stuff, then I'll put it here. So yeah, so I think I'm making sense. Basically for the quarterly pages up here at the front, this is what I mean when I say that. So if I don't use this section for my garden, um, like using these as extra monthlies as like a place to track things I want to do in the garden, then I will put that stuff on the actual January monthly and then also in the review page. So monthly and then the list of garden stuff would be over here if I don't end up doing it in the actual month itself. Okay, <laughs> I, I really hope I'm coming across off ca on camera. My, my brain feels a little scrambled right now. Um, okay, anyways... Moving on to the back pages, after you have all of the months and weeklies which are bundled in the front of the planner, you go into the daily pages or the notes pages in the back. And this is kind of where anything is possible because there are more notes pages than there are days of the year. So since there are more notes pages than there are days of the year, I want to try to add in a few of the other tracker pages that I like to keep track of in the year itself. So I'm going to assume that's 576, assuming I use this last page for December 31st, I can go all the way back until I think it's 211 
we'll say 210 or yeah 211 should be fine because 210 I think it'd be better to have both pages like this I think 211 should be fine and then I'll start January 1st on 212 so we'll put Jan 1 here and I do plan on redating the whole book so because this book is undated in the back and that was something I struggled a lot with with my sterling ink book in 2024 I do want to predate the whole book at the beginning of the year even if I end up not using all of the pages as as the day that they're on I still want to predate it because I think that was something I've I've have struggled with still struggling with um for my sterling ink because everything in the back is undated. I definitely think I do better with a dated book when it comes to a planner. If I'm just using it as a journal, notebook pages are, I think, what I would rather go with at this point. But anyways, for the remaining pages, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pages here. So I think I want to do... A date night log which is something that I keep track of in my Hobonichi cousin so I'll do date night log on this page wow I cannot spell right now and then I think for the other pages here I want to do a reading log similar to how I've done in my 2024 sterling ink book but I think I'm gonna condense in a little bit and I think I might need four pages if I keep up my reading habits in 2025 with how I did in 2024. So I think I'm going to do reading log, reading log, reading log, reading log. And then I want to have a space to write down, I think, my running log as well. If we're going to be continuing to try to put in all of the things. But I think I'm only going to need two pages for that. Because I'm not, let's see, 24, it's what, probably 42 squares times two. And then I can half it. Yeah, I think I'll be okay because I can do like January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. And then I, I don't run, I think, every month of the year. I think I'd be okay with just doing two pages. Uh, okay, and then I think I want to just leave... Hmm, because I still have, well, maybe I could do running logs for four pages like I did the reading logs, and then I can leave these extra two pages here just in case. <sighs> oh gosh, I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm going to move up my January 1st up here, because that way if I miscalculated my pages, I at least have maybe a couple of extra pages at the very back of the book. I'd rather do that. And then I will do four pages for a running log. So yeah, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And then I can do whatever on this page, maybe a vision board or something. Yeah, I think I like that better for now okay I think that's it for the Wonderland 222 because there's not any other pages back here I'll likely just decorate the end papers like I said with either some washi or some vinyls or something I haven't really decided that yet we're still pretty early in 2024 to be I think going full setup mode but I do feel the itch to set up so I'll probably be setting up some of my more hobby like journals first just so I can get started with those and maybe move into true setup season when um, the end of November comes around where I can fully embrace what I want to use my planners for. Anyways, that is it for this little pre-planned video. Um, hopefully it wasn't too chatty, too indecisive. I really am trying to decide you know, how I want to use all of my books and use them to the best of their capability, considering, you know, it's paper and I want it to be able to be very functional for my life. I'm excited to try out the 2025 Wonderland 222 and see how it works for me. Um, not because I don't want the cousin. I just think there could be something better out there and, um, this might be a good option. We'll see. We'll see what, what happens as I use it throughout the year. 
Anyways, if you have any questions about any of these books or what I'm doing in 2025, just let me know down in the comments. I'm always happy to chat about planners. And if you're interested in any of the future setups of these planners, be sure to stay tuned. I will have those videos coming out before the end of the year. Anyways, I want to thank you so much for watching, for joining me here today, and I hope to see you in the next one.